So, uh, what did you guys think of uh, think about anything interesting jump out of you? <laughs> did anybody notice any differences between um, the the uh, significance of the two shapes of the profile? We've got we had uh, in each of those categories we had the first copy which had a, um, a more rapid. Um, initial start and then a, a more steady state um, or a slower uh, rest development time. And then the second uh, profile of each uh, coffee type, uh, e either the short uh, roast time or the long roast time group, had the uh, a steady state uh, roast development time uh, or rate of rise. Um, any any uh, differences uh, noted in the acidity yeah. of those coffees? Anybody have any comments on that? Just raise your hands if you have any comments. Um, I definitely taste the difference between the profiles. I like two, four, six, and eight a lot more than I did one, three, five, and seven. So okay. uh, it was a lot more acidic. Yeah, the flavor yeah. came through a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think the reason if we look at that on, on these um, on both of those, you know, we talked about balance in the roast development time. Both of those had shorter, uh, or all of those had shorter roast development periods. So if we look at this right here, this was the steady state um, rate of rise. This this started um, uh, the first crack at about 10 minutes into the roast, and this was about a, a 12 minute roast, so it had about a two minute uh, roast development. Um, this one here started first crack much earlier uh, at nine minutes and um, had about a two and a half minute roast development time. So that, that goes to that, that concept of the acidity you know, diminishing later on in, in the roast. Um, also, um, the uh, development or the, the transformation of the sugars um, happened in, in a more controlled fashion. It wasn't, it wasn't like pushed hard at the beginning of the roast. It happened over a longer period of time at the start of the roast. Um, any, uh, any differences between the uh, the longer roast profiles and the shorter roast pro profiles that everybody knows? Or any other observations at all? Any hands? Again, you know, the purpose of this um, um, what wasn't really to define like an awesome roast profile or to say it should be roasted one way or the other. I mean, I have my preferences here as well, um, but it's really just to start get getting the thought process going about you know making a roast shorter, um, uh, experimenting with how you get from A to B on this, and uh, and then again, you know, the last thing here um, uh, was the number nine on the table, and I just, for kicks, I'll pull up the profile for that. Oops. Oh goodness, Drop, lost my slide, my last slide, so I apologize for that. Um, I'll get it, I'll, I'll include it in the, uh, the PowerPoint that's gonna be available. But basically on the last, um, the last roast, what happened was um, I took a very rapid uh, start to the roast, and um, just before it um, uh, started into a rolling first crack, I dropped the heat. So the coffee, the rate of rise actually went uh, negative. And so it went negative for about 30 seconds. And then I kicked the uh, heat back on again. So it was it's like kind of that classic, I forgot to put the heat back on again sort of thing. And um, anybody notice anything uh, distinctive about Very uh, underdeveloped, I think. Yeah. Weak and uh, multi. Yeah. Red. Okay. Yeah, it was. It, it actually, you know, with the power, when I put the power back on, and, and that's really a, a challenge with trying to recover, um, and which pretty much demonstrates how impossible it is. Um, uh, it it never completed first crack before the I, I got too far. You know, time wise, it just it just wouldn't recover. So um, yeah, it's the risk that you take. But I think that that's all. 
also it demonstrates again where, where potentially um, the more consistent steady state rate of rise can, can have a more positive effect. It minimizes your potential to, to get into a risky situation um, with, uh, with stalling the rise. So. Sorry, John, while I had the phone, uh, yeah. the mic, um, yeah. what kind of coffee? Uh, the number nine was a honey processed co Costa Rican. Okay. And also another question, uh, the air circulation? Yes. During the roast for these, all these roasts? Yeah. What do you, what do, you do when you? All of these were, th these were, it was all consistent. This was a decent W1, which just had fixed airflow. And it all had. The way, all the way from the beginning? Yes. To the end. Yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. It had, uh, it had a manual, um, uh, manual gas valve, not automated uh, environment temperature. Uh, manual gas valve with a, It was a three-quarter um, kilo batch on a one kilo machine. So it was, it was kind of in the zone there. Okay, thanks. Where was the first track on the last one? Yeah, on the last the honey. Oh, on the honey. On the honey. Um, uh, it was, that was a long roast. The first crack on that was at about 11 minutes and 30 seconds. And then you just and dropped it, it then? It, no, it the, the, heat, the heat dropped out at that point. And then about 30 seconds in of declining temperature, then the heat went back on and full throttle to try to get it to recover. Okay. And then it just kind of very slowly made its way back up. And I think it, it ended up at about 14, 20 total. Okay. So fairly long. So again, you know, it was uh, unroasted, grassy, you know, uh, undeveloped. Uh, you know, it just shows also that the length of the roast doesn't really matter. John, why yeah. did you choose to have a different coffee on number nine? Why didn't you just have the same one as we had? <coughs> and did the experiment with John? yeah, um, you know, unfortunately, that was just a practical matter. I didn't have I didn't have enough of the remaining samples to to do that. Good question. Good question. Can I ask you? Yes. I'm sorry, I was outside, and maybe you said this before, but can you uh, tell me a little bit between six and seven? Because I thought they were very different. Okay. Can you uh, tell me why six was so sweet and seven wasn't? <coughs> Is that the the rise of the temperature? Yeah. So six. More or less. So this is um, number six. Uh, okay, so these are these are very these are very different roast profiles. So number six was um, the uh, shorter roast period with uh, steady rate of rise. Um, number seven is the longer. It's a longer roast period. So. What's happening in when you protract that that uh, roast out like that is um, uh, more of the sugars are beginning to transform as well. So um, you know, as they they may develop more aromas as the Maillard reaction continues to progress through the roast, but that's consuming sugars as well as the amino acids. So the longer you get into that in, in that roast in a, in a time period, the more time because the the beginning of that Maillard reaction period is dependent on temperature rather than time. So the more time you expose it to the heat, the more the reaction is going to continue to go on and you're going to have a reduction in sugars. So um, I think you also had probably a corresponding uh, reduction in acidity as well uh, with the extended time frame. So again, just a consideration for, for um, if that's what you're looking for is, is for you know, balance and sweetness. I mean, you can all draw your own conclusions, but the conclusions that I, I've somewhat drawn is that shorter shorter period um, uh, really focusing on a, on a um, specifically short and appropriate roast development time um, and that steady uh, rate of rise is going to yield some really nice balance um, better better um, remaining sugars which again affects the it's the perception it's not 
it's not necessarily you know the, like the, the actual sweetness, but it's that balance between the acidity and the, re the resulting sugars that gives you that perception. So, yeah. Yes. Are those all washed coffee or are they? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, the, uh, the one, the 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 ninth one, the defect coffee was a honey, uh, honey the rest were all They were washed. Yeah. Washed. Okay. And um, if they were naturals, would you have done? Differently? Well, you know, again, basically I set up the parameters of this uh, regardless of what the coffee was. So what I wanted to do was to demonstrate some some distinctive uh, ranges. Like these, these were like broad passes and, it, and one wasn't designed specifically to be better than the other or to be a, a specific pur purposeful approach, but it was designed to illustrate kind of the cause and the effect of what's going on in the process. And so when I talk about interpolating, it's it's okay, taking an outside data point and taking an inside data point and, and kind of finding somewhere along the scale that fits for you. And then if, if nowhere within that boundary fits for you, then create a new data point. So, so you, might, you might apply this to out of the natural and see how it works for you. And you might, and I don't know, maybe you find that it's something entirely different uh, works, works for it. But again, that wasn't my purpose. My purpose was mostly to, to start thinking and engaging in the process of thinking about what to do. All right, let's give a big hand to John. Thank you. So now we have a